Welcome back to Quantitative Analysis in Anthropology. I'm Professor Peregrine, and today we're on Topic 3, Lesson 2, and we'll be talking about operationalizing variables. What operationalizing means is exactly what it says you're trying to put into operation uh, the, a, a, the measurement for some variable of interest. So you're taking that concept, that thing, that object, and you're doing an operation to put it into some quantitative form so you can analyze it. A basic form of operationalization is measurement. And really you can think of operationalization and measurement being sort of the same thing because what you're doing is putting a numeric or nominal value on some construct of interest. Now actually the term construct here, um, I'm using it pretty loosely as meaning an object or a person or an idea. Um, there's a more formal definition of that, but I, I'm not even, I'm not going to tell you because I don't want to confuse you, but what I mean by construct here is object, if you're an archaeologist it might be an artifact, a person that you might be studying as a cultural anthropologist, or some concept that you might be using in any field of anthropology. And I want to make a point that anything can be measured, although some things not necessarily well, if you have enough creativity. And the reason that I want to emphasize that is that there is a, a feeling in some areas of anthropology that, in fact, you can't measure things. You can't measure, as we talked about in the last uh, lesson, happiness. But actually, you can. It may not be a good measure, but in fact, in psychology, there's a lot of different measures of happiness. You'd think that the number of drinks you have in a week might be a much better measure of something because it's actually countable, but you can have a pretty good measure of happiness or love or enjoyment of life or something like that with enough creativity enough work, enough um, effort at trying to grasp what that concept means to you. So don't run away from the idea of not being able to measure something because you don't think that it's something that can be measured. Anything can be measured, although not everything very well. All right, the way that we take some concept, or I'm calling it a construct, uh, an object, person, an idea, and we actually turn it into a number is through a process that we call coding. And coding you can think of as being the protocol or the set of steps, the set of, of, of procedures that you do. A protocol by which measurements are taken in order to create a variable. This is the process of creating a variable by actually doing the measurements. And it is a protocol that has to be consistent between measures and between each time that you're taking the measure. And it's really important to emphasize that because the precision of any statistical analyses you, you do, and therefore the precision of any conclusions you come to, or simply descriptions that you make, is really based on the precision of the coding. So we want to be careful and we want to be thoughtful about the way that we create a protocol to code variables because that's going to affect everything else. And if we go back to the measurement part, that's why some things are not particularly good to measure because we really can't come up with a good protocol to measure them. There are a number of different ways in which coding can have errors, and the most common one is what's called random error. Random error comes up just because of slight differences in measurements. Slight differences in the way that somebody conceives something versus another person who's doing coding on part of the same project, or even one person as their concepts change a little bit as their 
coding over time. Random error, if it's minor, we don't really worry about that much. What random error tends to do is spread out a distribution, creates more deviation, more variance, right? In some kind of measurement, you're randomly adding error. It creates more variation in the numbers because there's error in there. What it tends to do is make it harder to see patterns because it sort of muddies everything. Um, it's very hard to correct for, which is bad because it's random. And it ends up sometimes, if it's bad enough, making it impossible to see any patterns, to see any, anything that might be of interest. The way that you control for random error is really to make the protocol you're using in coding very precise. The other kind of error is called systematic error. And we're not as worried about systematic error as random error, and we're way more worried about it because of this. Systematic error can be identified. And what systematic error does is just shift everything. If it's systematic, it's happening all the time, so it just shifts everything. A measure might be too big or too little, and so that's just going to shift the mean around. But if we can identify that, then we can do a transformation. We can add or subtract from that mean, and we can get it back to where it's supposed to be. Or however else we might have systematically changed the data, we can do a transformation and fix that. Now, if there's systematic error in the data and we don't see it, then that can start to create relationships or patterns that are false, that are not really there because we've created them through systematic error. That's a real problem. Within random and systematic error, there are basically three kind of mechanisms through which we get either of these. The first is through observer error. That's you or me making an error in what we see. That can be random and that we're not watching things well. We're looking at a behavior of somebody. And we're watching them, but we sort of look away sometimes or do things. We, we make an error as an observer. Or we don't see something that's going on right. So sometimes we think it's happening, whatever this behavior is. And sometimes we think it's not. That's an observer error. There's also what we call measurement error. And that's making errors in measurement. If you're measuring somebody's height and your protocol isn't very clear, you might be measuring sometimes in the front of the head and sometimes back here, or people might you might not make sure everyone's standing up straight or something, that you're not consistent in taking those measurements. And so you get random error in there. But you can get systematic error with measurement error too, where you systematically are doing the measurement wrong. Now once again, if you think about it, that may not be as big a problem for you as random error, because if you're systematically taking the measurement wrong, like suppose in the coding protocol, you're supposed to have uh, people wearing their shoes for whatever reason, and you're having them take off their shoes every time, you might be able to correct for that. And so shift the mean for, oh, it's supposed to be whatever, a half an inch higher because people are supposed to be wearing their shoes. There's another kind of measurement error that happens in terms of precision, where if your, your instrument is only allowing you to measure, say, height to a half a centimeter, but you're trying to measure it to a tenth of a centimeter, you don't have the accuracy to do that right, so your measurements are going to be sort of randomly fluctuating. And that will create some level of error. Um, there's measurement error that can come in also for using an instrument wrong. You don't actually know how to use an instrument. And so you're making wrong measurements because you don't know how the instrument actually works. That could also be seen as something of observer error 
and actually measuring the thing with the wrong precision could be seen as some kind of observer error so these these can be seen kind of in the same light but measurement error has a greater tendency to create a systematic error the other kind of error we can have is instrument error if an instrument is off somehow it's broken it's not recording right it's not measuring right it wasn't calibrated properly that can create all kinds of errors even if you're measuring things right or you're observing things right if your instruments broken or not working properly or is off in terms of calibration that's going to create an error and it can be either random or systematic if the calibration's off, it'll give you a systematic error because it's just off. If you can find that out, then you can correct everything for it. If the instrument is running out of batteries, let's say, and it's kind of giving readings that are off because it doesn't have enough juice left in it to measure right, that could be random error. Three different kinds of error that can create either random or systematic error. Again, random error tends to blur everything. Systematic error shifts things. So we're worried about both of them, but for different reasons. All right. When we're taking measurements, when we're coding, when we're creating a coding protocol, we want to be sure that the measure we're making or the coding protocol we're making will result in what's called reliable data. And what that basically means is that independent observers are going to get the same measurement if they're measuring the same thing. That it's a reliable measurement. Each time you do the measurement, it's going to come up with the same thing if you're measuring the same object, person, concept. And that if you have different people doing those measurements, they're going to be consistent. If they all measure the same person, they're all going to come up with the same measurement. That's called reliability. And reliability is dependent on protocol you create for coding and on the training you do of the people doing the coding. It's also dependent on the quality of the data. If you are trying to observe something and you got to do it through binoculars and your binoculars aren't that strong, you're not going to be able to see some of the behaviors even though you've got really good coding protocols in place. So some kinds of data are mushy enough or not visible enough that you, your reliability is going to be off. But typically, if you have really good protocol, you can even correct for that. The other concept or, or part of coding that we're really concerned about is validity. Validity comes out as be, if you have an invalid code, what it suggests is that it, it's not right, this is not a proper thing to do. It's not a good thing to do. And you'll hear some people say about coding happiness, well, that's invalid. That, that's not really what it means. What it really means is whether a measurement is actually measuring what you think it is measuring. So validity is whether a measurement is actually measuring what you think it's measuring. A couple of different forms of validity or ways that we can examine validity. One of them is just face validity. It's just on the face of it, does this make sense? So um, height. I want to measure it in centimeters when a person is standing upright. Does that make sense? Call that height. Well, yeah, that has face validity. If I'm looking at happiness or sadness, and I say, uh, my measure is how many times a person smiles in an hour. Yeah, is that really happiness or sadness, or is it contextual depending on if they're at a comedy show or, you know, at home eating dinner or something? Uh, that's face validity. Content validity is a, a more difficult concept. It's sort of a mushy concept, but it, it basically has to do with whether the content of what you're measuring uh, covers everything that you're interested in. 
so if you're interested in height does centimeters tall cover everything you're interested in height well yeah that seems to if smiling is a measure of happiness does that really cover everything that you're concerned with with happiness is smiling really what happiness is all about that's a that's probably doesn't have content validity construct validity is whether that construct you're using is actually a valid a valid one or one that actually measures something you want to um, so these two are very similar in lots of ways um, I had a very interesting situation in my career early on dealing with sort of content or construct validity which was myself and another faculty member were getting scores that weren't perfect weren't high really high on a scale of the question faculty member is in, available during their office hours and that should be a pretty simple thing to measure right because it's just are you sitting in a chair during your office hours so we spent a semester and we checked one another we were in our office hours for the entire time and guess what our scores didn't change they were not perfect because we were leaving out one piece which is are you accessible do students feel comfortable seeing you so that measurement faculty member is available during office hours was actually in part do you feel comfortable going to see them or maybe even are those office hours ones that you can go to that means that the that the content or the construct was not really right office hours weren't measuring the construct there it wasn't completely what was going on there okay and finally there's something called criterion validity which is if you have a measure already does this measure match it is the criteria on which you're measuring different things do they work and, and criterion validity is used a lot in psychology for example and economics and other fields to identify validity because there's always already something well established some kind of of uh, concept or construct and you've got it measured one way you've come up with a different way to measure it using some other set of measures or a simpler way to measure it doesn't match with the criterion of other measurements so validity really important concept in in creating variables that's it for this lesson we went through it really quickly but in fact this is something that you are going to deal with probably in other research classes it's not as much about the statistics as research methods how you go about gathering data um, here we're really going to be concerned more so with the analysis of data so that's why I go through this a little bit quickly but I hope you have gained uh, at least a, a basic understanding of how you take a concept or a person or an object and you are able to measure code and create a reliable and valid uh, piece of data and the, the main thing to really take away from this is the concept of error error does matter a lot for the statistics we're going to be talking about in the next lesson and as we move on so that's enough for today. We'll see you next time.